Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Discover at Home. My name is Annie McDonald. I'm the Naturalist and Volunteer Coordinator at North Lakeland Discovery Center up in beautiful Manitowish Waters, Wisconsin. Again, thank you all for your support during this difficult time. We appreciate you guys watching our videos and staying tuned. We'll hopefully be able to open up and bring you normal programming sometime in the near future, maybe later on in June and into July. We'll see how things go, but thank you for staying with us. If you want more information about our nature center and our facilities and programs, as well as our membership opportunities, you can find all of that at our website, www.discoverycenter.net. Well, it's a beautiful day here in the Northwoods, and I wanted to take a little bit of time during this nice spring day to explore one of my favorite landscapes up here in this area that we call home, and that is the marsh. There are 36 different classifications or types of wetlands located within Wisconsin, and everything from forested seeps to coastal plains along our Great Lakes shorelines to uh, peatlands and fens, and we're not going to get bogged down in all of those, but today we're going to explore an interesting landscape of the marsh. So I hope you all have brought your muck boots and are ready to get a little bit mucky. So as we explore our wetland a little bit further, it's impossible to ignore the culprit for this distinct landscape of this wetland. And that is this giant beaver dam. As you can see, starting here at this shoreline and continuing at almost an average height of about two feet all the way around, makes almost a 90 degree jog there and then another all the way to the far shoreline on the other side, impounding this water behind it. And there you can actually see one of the beaver dams from this colony in the marsh. So as we walk along this beaver dam, carefully since I'm holding an iPad, you can really get the sense of the difference between our marsh or our wetland habitat. Look at that nice calm water with lots of floating vegetation as well as shrub uh, emergent vegetation too. Versus on our lake side, leading back out to that open water. And it's a windy day today. There's actually white caps out there. A very different experience than in our marsh and our protected impoundment here. Well, now I've portaged that beaver dam and we can see it from the perspective of the marsh side. And you can see it's a complex of mud as well as uh, logs and sticks that the beavers have uh, meticulously built over this large span over a number of years. And why do beavers build dams? Well, they're kind of selfish to a certain extent in that they're much better swimmers than they are walkers. And so by impounding water behind the dam, they create a better habitat for themselves, for them to be able to find and get access to their resources, their food, as well as their shelter from predators. So here we are back here in the protected waters of the marsh. We're protected from that wave action out on the lake and relatively shallow waters of the marsh uh, enable it to just be sun drenched and nutrient rich, rich, which supports just an explosion of biological activity from our plant life. We've got emergent pond lilies here to our shrub aspect too. We've got a lot of uh, shrubs in terms of leather leaf, mosses, sedges, as well as cattails and other grasses. And all of this plant life down all the way to the algae supports the macroinvertebrates, which then provide the food all the way up the chain to our amphibians, our mammals, and our birds. Along the perimeter of our marsh, you can see some emergent grasses. In this case, a lot of cattails. Most later on in the summer, we have rushes. There's also tamarack trees and spruce trees back in there as well. And that along with this shrub-like area with all of this leather leaf and sedges provides excellent foraging habitat and cover for some of our marsh birds, such as our American bittern, which you rarely see it has such phenomenal camouflage, but sometimes in the early morning hours or in the late evening, you can hear it making its distinctive um, water pump like call it kind of sounds like this unk a chunk unk a chunk something along those lines but of course this area is home to much more than just bitterns as well as other marsh birds like snipe we also have of course 
course, our Canada geese nesting here, our sandhill cranes, uh, blue-winged teal, and wood ducks and mallards. Right in the middle of the screen, you can actually see the eye of a leopard frog, and they get their name because they have these distinctive markings, kind of like spots, almost like a leopard over their back. And they're calling right now. They kind of make a snore-like uh, call. So the, the marsh isn't just only a great spot for us bird watchers who love waterfowl and shorebirds and marsh birds, but if you enjoy amphibians, it's a great spot to see some frogs, um, such as our leopard frog here that you can see. There's its eye and some of the spots on its back. Sorry, it's kind of difficult to get in there, but he's being extremely patient. Oh my gosh. Our leopard frog, you can hear in the background maybe, some of the spring peepers. So they've been calling for a number of weeks now. They're not still, they're not quite as deafening as they were just a few weeks ago. But our toads, the American toad, has been trilling and making its calls along the shore the, or the um, perimeters of our marshes too, including also our um, gray tree frogs. So the marsh has a lot to offer, not just for our bird lovers like me or for those people who want to get out and see muskrats and beavers. There's lots to offer, including reptiles, our turtles, as well as our frog life. So we're going to wrap up this short marsh tour where we could be spending hours or even days out here on this big complex looking at all of the different flora and fauna of this, uh, of this region. But we're just going to wrap up by looking at this beaver lodge. And there's a couple of beaver lodges out on this pretty large complex marsh. And the beavers are really the responsible engineers of the keystone species, particularly for this marsh. Uh, by impounding, by building that dam and raising the water level of this marsh, they set that successional clock back in terms of deforesting the region and making it this open, wet landscape, which is really conducive to different bird species like our waterfowl and our marsh birds, as well as some of our songbirds as well as our amphibians like we saw and reptiles, our turtles, as well as some fish species. So the beaver can be pretty prolific. They'll generally have upwards of five kits per year and those kits are their young. They stay with that beaver adult pair in the lodge for generally about two years before they're then kicked out of the lodge and forced to go uh, to find territories and build lodges of their own. So if you have a favorite marsh or wetland or bog or region near you that you enjoy exploring, uh, please fo post photos of it or share your comments um, down below this video. We'd love to hear about your sightings and what you're seeing out in this beautiful spring. And I beaver be getting out of here. Thanks for watching everyone. We appreciate it. Make sure to check out our website www.discoverycenter.net for updates regarding our programs and facilities and trails. Things like that will keep you up to date. We hope to see everyone soon. Please take care, stay well, and may the marsh be with you.